This week on The Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles, lease purchases, lease options, wraps, subject twos, all creative ways to invest in real estate. So stay tuned. Support for this program comes from the Digital Broadcasting Network, presenting podcasts and web series from everyday people who have an extraordinary passion to make the world a better place. Welcome back to The Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles. I am on uh, episode, I think, number 17 or 18, and I'm, again, just always thankful for you tuning in and listening to this this show. I, I get comments from friends and uh, non-friends or associates and people that are um, picking up on the podcast, so I appreciate your uh, tuning in, and when I delve off into non-real estate topics, I appreciate the comments. I got uh, one of the previous episodes was Don't Worry, Be Happy, and so I got some comical uh, even though it's a serious topic, I got some comical texts from folks indicating that if you know if I just send them some money, they would be happy. They don't have to worry about uh, not being happy. And so, uh, I, that, what that tells me is that people are listening, and um, and they they made me laugh. So um, I'm probably going to switch back this week, or I am going to switch back this week to a real estate topic. But you might see me going um, back and forth between these topics because again, I do motivational speaking, KevinRiles.com, uh, and uh, I'm very passionate about people living their best life, um, just like Oprah. Uh, so I want to uh, make sure that I incorporate that into this podcast. And the reason is, it's my podcast, so I can do what I want to do. Uh, so uh, that's the great thing. Uh, secondly, um, you know, a part of motivation and a part of wealth building is is having a good sense of purpose and a good sense of who you are. And so I think that uh, actually the subjects are tied together. A lot of people listen to this for education, but they also listen to it for motivation as it pertains to, um, you know, investing in real estate. And so to that end, this week, I wanted to talk about creative ways to purchase real estate investments, creative ways to purchase real estate investments. And so uh, the title of this is Lease Purchase, Lease Options, Wraps, and Subject Twos. Uh, and so if I just put creative uh, ways to invest in real estate in the podcast title, some people may listen, may not listen. So I kind of wanted to give you a sense of what I'm going to uh, talk about. So let me state from the beginning that I am not an attorney. I just play one on TV, right? Uh, and so literally I'm on TV right now. So if you're watching this video version of the podcast, uh, then I am not an attorney. So everything that I am telling you, you should check with and get an attorney. And speaking of which, I think it is important as a real estate investor to have three important people on your team. One is a really good real estate broker. Kevin Riles might be that, but if not, not someone. Uh, the other is a CPA that is familiar with real estate and real estate investments. Not just a CPA, not just a tax person, but a CPA, someone that is familiar with doing real estate. That's very important. And then the third is an attorney, a real estate attorney. Uh, and a real estate attorney in terms of not necessarily litigation, uh, although that is very important as well, but also uh, who is familiar with all the different types of deeds and uh, transactions and execu executory contracts and things of that nature. I think that's really important. Uh, don't go cheap on those three people. In other words, don't, don't try to look for the cheapest real estate attorney or the cheapest CPA. You want to look for the best. And if they happen to be competitively priced, that's great. If they're maybe a little bit more expensive, you, you will make more money by paying a good CPA and paying a good uh, lawyer than anything else. So, um, Sometimes I get calls into the office and people say, hey, I want to purchase a property. And because of whatever reason, I'm not able to. I have some other things going on. Uh, I'm going through a divorce or there's the existing property owner has really good financing I'd like to take advantage of. And so I'll get questions. How can I purchase this property uh, and not go through traditional financing? And that's why I call this creative ways. Not go through a bank, not go to, you know, apply for a loan, get a loan and things of that nature. And so what I wanted to talk to you about briefly today were a couple of ways that you can you can do that. And the first and uh, way is a lease purchase a lease purchase. And I define a lease purchase as, or should be defined as, uh, where you are leasing a property and a portion of the rent, of the lease rate of the rent, goes towards a purchase price. So for an example, if you're uh, paying $2,000 a month in lease and let's say that the uh, property is being sold to you at a predetermined price of $200,000, and you agreed with the landlord that $500 of your rent 
uh, will go towards the eventual purchase price of um, the, the property. And so out of that scenario, $2,000 a month in rent, of which $500 a month goes towards the eventual purchase price, that means at the end of a year, you would have had five times 12, 500 times 12 or $6,000 uh, towards that $200,000 purchase price. And now you would only, and I put in air quotes for those watching on uh, listening, uh, those watching on video can see me do the air quotes, air quotes, um, uh, 194. And so why would you do this? What what are the advantages of, of doing, doing this? One, if you're leasing a property and not quite sure if you want to purchase it, it gives you basically an option uh, to just be regular lease. You don't have to exercise um, uh, the purchase portion of it, right? Two, uh, you're building up, and I, again, I'm putting in air quotes, equity uh, in the property. So again, $2,000 a month, $500 a month goes towards the eventual purchase price. And every time you pay rent, you're building up a credit towards the agreed upon initial purchase price. Now, some lenders look at that as prepaid down payment. All right, some lenders will treat that as prepaid down payment so that if you ended up having to put fifteen or twenty thousand dollars down, you wouldn't you have now basically saved up six thousand towards that uh, towards that purchase price. Some lenders don't take it that way, Nate. They would have you do a new contract when you purchase the property, when you get ready to do traditional financing at now 194 at the end of the year or 188 at the end of two years and so on and so forth. But either way, you're getting a quote unquote credit uh, towards the eventual purchase price of a property. All right. So that's a creative one of the creative ways to uh, do and that's called the lease purchase. Now. There's a lease option and they're different and people interchange these all the time. A lease option, you are not getting a credit. A lease option is a option to purchase the property during the terms of the lease, all right? So if you have a lease and you have what we call an amendment, a lease uh, amendment, uh, option amendment, you can exercise that option anytime during that lease, all right? And so this gets really technical and I'm not gonna get too technical uh, here, but there are special provisions uh, in the Texas Property Code uh, that talk about whether that lease option is uh, 180 days or fewer or more than 180 days. If it's 180 days or fewer, uh, then it's it's not called what we call an executory contract. An executory contract basically is kind of like a contract for deed. Uh, and again, beyond the scope of this, I could probably spend two hours just on lease options. But for the purposes of this you know, short podcast, what I will tell you is that essentially it's an option. You're not getting a credit like we talked about in lease purchases. You're not getting a credit like we're talking about lease purchases. You have the option to purchase the property on uh, at any given time at a pre at either a predetermined price if it's under six months or an option to purchase at whatever agreed upon price uh, at uh, during the the lease and so why might you do this well again same reason as a lease purchase one of the reasons is you might not have decided to purchase the property lease options and lease purchases by the way are both used for people that want to live in a house or commercial they're also done on commercial properties as well so everything that i'm saying today uh, applies to both residential uh, and and commercial uh, lease options are um, methods for you to be able to lease a property uh, with an option to purchase it and you might not know whether you want to purchase it at, at a certain time or it might allow you for a time for you to be able to save up enough money to purchase the residential or commercial uh, property uh, and so you can exercise that option and it really protects your right to be able to purchase it because if you just have a regular old lease and this goes for um, uh, the lease purchase and lease option. If you have a regular old lease, then the seller can sell it at any time or the landlord can sell it at any time. The, uh, the new buyer has to honor the lease. Uh, they do have to honor the lease, but you have no uh, basically power as it pertains to purchasing uh, the asset. And so lease with an option, uh, I typically can recommend uh, to folks that are leasing now, if you're leasing a property, and again, this is both residential and commercial. Um, I just negotiated a deal where um, a commercial uh, person is leasing, but they have the first right of refusal or option basically to purchase at a predetermined price. And so, uh, um, it, well, let me also say this, lease options don't necessarily, depending on how they're written, mean that you have first right of refusal. Uh, you have to specifically say that in the option. Uh, so let me be real technical on that. Again, I am not an attorney. I just play one on TV. 
uh, you need to check with your attorney with everything I'm, I'm saying. However, I know I'm right. So uh, with that being said, uh, for those of you, because I, I, I know for a fact I have four attorneys that listen to this podcast because they text me all the time. Uh, so just before y'all start correcting, I'm just letting y'all know uh, up front. All right. So uh, you have lease purchases. You have lease options, lease with an option to buy. That's the way I like to say it because it separates lease with an option to buy. Whereas lease purchase as one word uh, to me means that I'm getting a credit every month. So uh, sometimes, and I have a situation like this now where the the owner would be willing to do this. Sometimes um, owners are willing to owner finance a property, right? So what does that really mean? That means that the owner becomes the bank. Instead of you going to a big bank or a community bank, um, the owner becomes the the note. So let's say the big bank was Chase or Wells Fargo. You would normally go to them. They would lend on the property. You would put a down payment, and they would have a note that you would pay to them every month. Well, in owner financing, the bank becomes the owner. They take back the, the way we say it in the industry is they take back a note. All right? You sign. You pledge to pay them back. Um, the the note. And so this, again, can be done on residential and commercial property. And so let's use an example of just $100,000. Actually, you know what? I always use a hundred. Let's use a million. Let's let's talk big dollars. Uh, So let's use a million dollar property, right? And so a million dollar property, uh, commercial property, and let's say the owner is willing to take back a note. Uh, I have a property now where uh, it's just over a million dollars and the owner is willing to take back a note. And so in that particular instance, the owner uh, has given terms of uh, 25% down, right? They're given terms of the the new buyer would have to put 25% down. Uh, It would be amortized over 20 years, right? Which means it's a 20-year loan. Uh, He has said that he wants an interest rate of 6.5% which is a little high, but again, it's owner financing. Uh, and then he, the note would be due and payable within 36 months or a balloon payment in 36 months. So this owner is willing to take back a uh, loan uh, and he does not owe anything on this particular property, he owns it outright. So that's classic owner financing, right? The owner owns it outright. There's no uh, existing lien or existing mortgage on the property. Uh, and um, the owner takes, you know, you put a down payment, y'all go to closing just like normal. The deed is recorded, the deed of trust, which is the lien against the property is recorded. And then you have a note and you pay the owner every month based on that interest rate and based on whatever negotiated terms. That's a clean owner finance. That 36 month balloon that I talked about, by the way, is typically an owner finance deal, especially on the commercial side. They want they don't want to hold that paper or hold that loan forever, so they want you to eventually get out of it. And so that gives you an opportunity, if it's a commercial property, especially to get established if you're owner occupied or if it's an investor, to get some financials in so that you can turn those financials in to a lender and refinance that and, and give him the bulk or her the bulk of that money uh, uh, within a three year period. Now that's classic. Owner finance works the same on residential as it does on commercial. Now, let's say that same owner has an underlying loan, that that owner is has a loan with a large bank, let's just say Chase or Wells Fargo. So a million dollar property, they're still selling it to you for a million dollars, but let's say they owe 500,000, right? They owe 500,000, they are paying a mortgage themselves. They can still owner finance that property to you with what's, what's called a wrap loan. Right, a wrap loan, or we call wraps, wraps around the existing finance. That's where the term comes from. So again, in this particular case, let's use the same numbers: a million dollar property. The owner, current owner, owns owes five hundred thousand. They're going to sell it to you for a million dollars, so they have five hundred thousand dollars in equity. Uh, you're going to put twenty five percent down, so you're going to give that owner two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right, and so now you owe the owner 750 uh, and that owner uh, owns uh, owes the bank 500 so you can see where the 750 wraps around the 500 that's where the wrap portion comes from uh, so what do you need to be aware of in wrap situations um, that it's still a loan it still can is recorded uh, at the county courthouse you do own the property uh, and you just your lien uh, is is secondary to the primary lien uh, uh, of the large bank in this particular example. Now, what people will tell you, which is true, 
that there's a thing called a deed of trust and you're going to get a deed of trust anytime you buy a property with a loan there's a thing called a deed of trust and that literally places a lien against the property and for those of you watching on video i always use this when i'm talking to people a lien like something leaning up against the property i hit the mic there uh, but so uh, that's what a mortgage is right a mortgage is a lien uh, and so until you pay that mortgage off it's leaning against your property uh, and so in those deed of trust, which is, which is what I call the 21 page, don't stay, don't pay document. You don't pay, you don't stay document. Uh, there is a, a clause in that document that's, that's a do on sale clause, which means that if the owner sells the property or transfers the title to the property, then that loan can become due on sale. In other words, they can accelerate and say, give me all of my money back. So using the same example, a lender could come back and say, hey, you have now sold this property. I want my $500,000 now, right now. And that's what the deed of trust says. Most deed of trust, all deed of trust say, right? The key word is can. If you read a deed of trust, it says the lender may. It doesn't say the lender must. And it has been, again, I'm not an attorney, but it has been my experience that as long as a lender is being paid, they don't really care. Right. As long as the underlying lender is being paid, they don't really care. And so there are many investors out there that specialize in, in wraps where they will find an owner finance it to a potential buyer or you as an investor could present this to an, as an option to a potential opportunity that you have. Someone is looking to get rid of a house. You want to put a little less down. You don't want to have to go out and put a new loan on your books. You could do a wrap mortgage. Uh, you definitely would need to use an attorney to make sure that the deed of trust for the wrap is, um, is, is correct as far as the way it's, it's put together. And then secondly, um, you also want to make sure that there's some level of relationship because there are other things you have to consider. For instance, people always ask me, if I do a wrap, should I get insurance or in, in the underlying loan, in, aren't they insured? And what I've read and researched indicates that yes, you still should get property insurance. Even though I know that's double insurance, the underlying loan may have the property insured uh, and you may have the property insured. In the case of a loss, you would rather be safe uh, than sorry. Uh, and so wraps are uh, not also, not co as common as you may think, but they are great useful tools. And I think they're not as common because everyone's always scared of the due on sale portion of it. Uh, and again, my experience with people that have done these deals before is that the lender very seldomly uh, tells you, hey, you, you know, we're, we saw that you transferred the title. Uh, and so therefore, we want uh, uh, we want our, all of our money uh, back. And then there's ways to protect yourself uh, from that within the, the rap D language as well. Again, I could do a whole series of podcasts on on the steps to rap, but I want you to just to be aware of it. So we've talked about lease purchase. We've talked about lease with an option or lease options. We've talked about wraps. Uh, the, the final for this podcast uh, I'd like to, to kind of introduce you to is subject twos. Uh, and subject twos are, are purchasing a property subject to the existing debt. Right, That's where the word comes from. Uh, purchasing a property subject to the existing debt. Well, hey, Kevin, you just talked about wraps. Isn't that the same thing? No, wraps are... Um, literally transfers of the property subject to the existing debt uh, almost works almost works and i say almost works uh, uh somewhat like a lease you're taking possession of the property and you're subject to the existing uh debt uh, and so therefore my experience with people that have done subject twos uh you are almost working as a uh, and again, this is my language, not the technical language, uh, a power of attorney for the existing owner as it pertains to dealing with their mortgage company and things of that nature. They, you, they basically give you access to their loan and you're, you're paying it uh, on a daily basis and so, or a monthly basis. And so in this particular scenario, you might give the existing owner a upfront fee uh, or a bounce and then you keep the existing debt and you, the new investor or new buyer, become responsible for it. Great thing about this is you take possession of the property, you still can transfer debt again, not worrying about the due on sale clause. The not as great thing is that it's subject to the existing debt. You're not getting any tax advantages uh, as far as the interest deductions and things of that nature. Uh, again, I'm also not a CPA, uh, but I think I know I'm right. I think I know I'm right. I don't know if that means anything. So anyway, um, so where could you use these as an investor? 
uh, on the commercial side, owner finances uh, and wraps, uh, uh, and to an extent subject twos, but definitely owner finance and wraps are extremely common extremely common uh, in, in uh, commercial financing. Residential financing, not as much. Typically, some people, you know, may want all their money all up front. And so therefore, uh, you know, they want you to get traditional financing or bring cash. But I, I am going to guess here, uh, that especially in the Houston area, especially after the storm, that there are going to be more opportunities out there for creative ways to get uh, folks, to help folks also get get out of houses that you know they may or may not want anymore. I know since the storm, it's been a month and a half, I guess, since the storm. Um, and I've gotten at least four or five calls into my office asking me what the value of their property is now that it's flooded out and they're just done. They don't want to deal with the house anymore. And so there are, there are investor opportunities out there for, in Houston area specifically, for flooded out houses. But I think this information is really good to know regardless of of what's going on here in Houston now, because there may be a situation where, hey, you just purchased a property or you just, you know, spent a lot of cash on something else, uh, not even real estate, and have an opportunity to purchase something and, and need a creative way to kind of tie that property up while you get back on your feet as far as whatever cash outlay you've had. So again, lease purchase, lease options, wraps and subject twos. These are four ways, and there are more, but these are four uh, primary ways that people buy a real estate creatively. So I want to thank you for listening to The Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles, and I will see you next week. If you have a question about anything that we've talked about on The Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles, a real estate question or a life question, no matter what, uh, email me at kevin at kevinriles.com. Again, that's kevin at kevinriles.com. I'll get it. I'll make sure that I uh, respond to you via email, but also I want to kind of collect these uh, answers so that I could uh, help everyone else. So again, kevin at kevinriles.com.